<laughs> wow. <laughs> that was interesting. Um, hopefully we didn't blast anybody's ears out. Um, yeah. Okay. Whew. I'm going to delete that one. So we're going to do a quick. Wow. Okay, hold on. Now I have to. That was interesting. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm such a novice. Let's let's start all over again. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to make this a little bit shorter so that um, I'll do the intro. But my name is Bridget Belden, and this is Wise Women Wednesdays, where every Wednesday I bring on an expert or and or a mom who has learned how to integrate the one of the six pillars into her life. And this month we've been focusing on cultivating relationships. And those six pillars are all about how to live a brighter life. And so they stand for the word bright. So B is be brave, cultivate relationships, practice intention, practice or live with intention, practice gratitude, prioritize health and live your truth. And so they're not necessarily in that order, but uh, this month we're finishing up relationships and I'm so excited to have Vanessa here. We're gonna talk about how to establish boundaries with your adult children. And you'll hear in a minute as I read her bio, why she's such a, a great guest to have talk about this. And Vanessa Callahan, MED is a parent empowerment coach known for her refreshingly honest, hands-on and personal approach. Vanessa empowers parents to find the calm, confidence, and tools they need to address challenging behaviors such as meltdowns, power struggles, sibling fights, and motivation issues. She helps families shift painful dynamics so that love can flow more freely between family members while they build resilient, lifelong relationships based on respect, appreciation, and love. Vanessa is the founder of Raising Our Resilience and draws upon 15 years of classroom experience and her educational research background in positive psychology, Montessori motivation, I'm sorry, Montessori motivation, child development, and resilience at UC Berkeley. She also brings her life experience as a step parent, caregiver, member of the LGBTQ community, and mixed race person of color to create a safe, supportive, shame-free learning environment. I love that. She works with clients one-on-one, -on -one, private coaching intensives, and a year-long program, the Family Foundations Immersions. So welcome, without further ado, Vanessa. Sorry about that strange voice that took over our... <laughs> <laughs> so good to be here, Bridget. That was, that was really odd, but I'm glad we made it back. Um, Me too. And I've been wanting to come and hang out with you all um, for, you know, in the Thriving Moms Collective for some time now. So I'm so excited to be here. Such a pleasure. Uh, Love what you're up to. And thank yeah, you. Yeah, really good to be here. Likewise. So did I forget anything in your bio? Um, you have obviously quite such an amazing background with childhood development. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, I most of my focus, I'll just be straight, you know, I want to let everyone know is um, with for parents whose kids are still school age. So mm -hmm. even all the way down to toddlers and preschoolers. Um, and what I'm finding though, cause I myself have uh, two stepchildren um, ages 22 and 25, is that the same things I'm teaching parents of two, 12, two, two to 12 year olds still applies even with our adult children. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm bringing that, that to the table, but just want everyone to know like where, where my focus is and um, that it's never too late to sort of catch up on some of the things that maybe you wish, like you wish you had known to do earlier on. Oh, thank God. Because I think <laughs> as, as parents of adult children, there's so many things where I sit there and think, I wish I did that. I should have done this. I could have. And I try not to have regrets because I believe you do the best job you can when you're going through it. Right. But um, how great to be able to, you know, apply kind of retroactively some of the things that we'll be learning today. And I explained to Vanessa that we do have some moms that um, do have young kids that are in this group. And really, you know, the whole idea, the focus of the group is life beyond mom and discovering who you are, which can happen at any age or any stage. So I think there's a lot of synergies with Vanessa and I'm so glad we've had the opportunity to connect. Um, and, you know, as we get started, one of the things that I hear the most, I think, from moms that I work with, and I know for me personally, I have a 23-year-old and a 25-year-old, is how to establish those boundaries in those relationships. And I know for me personally, it's like I have an idea of what 
you know, success looks like. And, you know, as your kids are growing up, you're doing everything you possibly can to make sure that they are successful in their, whatever their endeavors end up being. And then they get to college and then through college, and then maybe their path doesn't look like what we thought it would. And maybe they didn't do it in the way that we thought they should. And it's really hard, I know for me personally, to kind of, you know, separate myself and my expectations and my vision for my kids from their reality and you know remembering that they are adults that they are you know launching on their own so i don't know if you can speak to kind of that and i think that there's there's some people who might share that um experience with me but i would love to know what you think yeah absolutely this is one of the seven pillars of my my structure you know that I help parents with is establishing healthy boundaries and it does start really young um, and one of the keys one of the key things that I think parents we can often miss is that there are some steps before we um, have an ask or we give advice or we share our thoughts or we try to influence an outcome there are some steps before that sort of advice giving moment I think that sometimes we leap past these steps, which I'll share with you in a moment, but I think yes. we can pass those steps and go straight to, well, since it's my job to guide this child, I need to give them advice or else, or, or I'm not doing my job. Right. That's a lot of pressure on us. And then it also takes away some of the opportunity for the child or teen or adult to really build their own critical thinking skills, to really have a lot of sense of like, ownership and responsibility for the choices they make and the opportunity to like learn from the lab of life which isn't always the isn't always running under the conditions we create yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is for sure <laughs> like think of the hallways of high school and how different that is than from the hallways of your own home like yes. it's like a totally different setting and so as as our kids and teens and tweens are launching in, in, and young adults are launching into greater and greater like you know settings um, we, we do need to shift sort of how we approach giving advice, guiding and advising. So can I, can I lay out a few of the things that we Please. also skip? Okay. I've got my pen ready. I'm going to take yeah. that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the first thing that we often do is we, instead of getting into their world, we make assumptions instead of getting updates. So what I mean by that is we can assume that we already know what's motivating our child, what they're thinking about, what they're in, what they're, why they're doing what they're doing, because we have so many years of experience with them and we have so, such intimate knowledge of them, especially with our adult kids. And so we can say things to ourselves like, oh, he's just doing that because he's a procrastinator or um, she's, she's doing that because um, you know, she's conflict avoided or um, there she goes again, putting her friends before, you know, before her work or something. And we can have these little scripts that we don't even realize we're running. Mm -hmm. That can be both, they could be negative and positive. They can run in either direction, but no matter what, like their assumption that they're, they're presumptuous. Yes. Yeah. So just by, by instead of making assumptions, make updates, <laughs> get, get updates. And how you, the best way to do that is to put, delay the advising, delay the, oh, I get it. That's, that's so <laughs> hard. You have to delay it. I know that's why, I, that's why it's number one tip. I mean, right? It's top of the list. Yeah. <laughs> delay it to, to get updates because what I've found with all parents of all ages is we tend to be three, six to three, three to six months or a year behind mm. where our child really is. Mm. Like we're still trying to help them put their shoes on when they just, they already learned how to tie their shoes, but we haven't had given them a chance to show us. Um, they're actually making pretty good choices about their friends, but because a year ago they had this one bad friend, we're all, we're still kind of like, you know, getting Not involved with their friend choices, but we haven't really stepped back to see what are they actually doing? How, how, what choices are they making and checking in with them? So you gather evidence through observation, just observe, like see what are the plain facts here? Try to put your assumptions aside and stay open-minded. And then you can actually start to like get into their world by asking them really open-ended questions, okay? So you don't bring your assumptions into these questions. You're not like, oh, are you doing this because you're procrastinating again? That's not the question. <laughs> Damn. <It's> like, <laughs> I know. So you can share an observation, share a simple observation like, oh, sweetheart, I remember last time we were talking, you said you had a lot of projects on your table, uh, on your plate. 
and that the deadlines are coming up this week. Now in the back of your mind, you're like, I'm check, you kind of want to check in on how they're doing, but you're like pulling that back and you're just saying, um, how's it going? Okay. <laughs> Such a different mode to be in and you really have to bite your tongue and just stop there. How's it going? Yeah. And, and, and let them lean back into you sharing some information. And if they don't, you have to leave it alone. It's fine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so adults and teens what i've understand what i've seen is that the more space you give them the more they actually step into it mm. the, more, the more you open those questions the more information they tend to share wow that's good yeah so for example my 23 year old who just graduated from college had a job offer signed up had a letter you know everything he had a job so he decided to stay up there signed a lease got a puppy. And then two weeks before graduation, they pulled the offer because they were cutting back all their sales staff, all these people. And so he was unfortunately one of those. So now he's up there in this with this year long lease with his dog puppy, I might add, um, in his apartment and, you know, looking for a job. And so in that case, I want to give him the space. He knows what's expected of him, but at the same time, I'm going, how's that going? Like in my head, I want to go, okay, have you, you know, signed up, lined up any interviews? You know, have you talked to anybody? What's happening? Yet I know I need to give him the space. Do you have any, any ideas or suggestions around that? Yeah. I mean, okay. So then the, the next thing you could, so, so there's getting into their world, trying mm -hmm. to get some information. If there, those doors are not open, if he's like, mom, I got this. Then you can shift to just empathizing with his situation. Just being like, sweetheart, I just want you to know that I'm feeling for you right now. Like, uh, that must have been tough to have that offer pulled. And I'm just so in your corner, whatever you need. I'm 100% I'm here. And whatever steps you're taking or not taking, like, no judgment. I'm just, I'm just, just know I'm here and I'm in your corner. Okay. Just a bit like giving some of that empathy and showing some understanding, a little reassurance. Mm -hmm. Um, where like see how you're not managing activity right not managing his activities right you're not getting into the weeds because he didn't want to share those details with you right and you're like and he, acting that mm -hmm. and he is the uh, most challenging and I know from a lot talking to a lot of moms out there that when they don't communicate at all he's not super communicative um, it's painful because I find and we'll talk about this in a minute but it's it's just it's I, I almost become like obsessive and thankfully I stop myself before I, you know, send a text asking how he's doing um, just to try and give him that space. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if anybody can relate. If you can drop a yes into the comments um, and let us know. Um, so the, did you have something else you wanted to say about that? Cause I kind of cut you off a little bit. No, no, no. Well, I mean, don't worry about the cutting off. I feel like this is such a rich conversation. Um, you know, when we when we share a bit of that empathy, like it can do something for our own anxiety or concern. Because what I'm hearing is that when that obsessive piece comes in, what's really what's really running us is anxiety. Yes, like anxiety. And so it's almost compulsory to like soothe that anxiety. And but what we're doing though is we're making our kids responsible for soothing us. So we're actually then adding to their plate instead of instead of offering them more support. Do you mm -hmm. see? Yeah. Keep keep like, you know, have that in mind. Like um, my second tip is why? Like what is the actual reason behind whatever activity that's happening, whether it's texting them, asking them questions, like being really like being really clear, like doing that pause, like I just saw you do in a way, right? Just checking in saying like, yeah. wait, why am I trying to get this information from him right now? Is right. it from a place of I'm well resourced and I have a lot to offer or am I trying to get something from them? Get some soothing of my anxiety, get some reassurance, get some reassurance that I'm a good parent, get some reassurance that they're okay. Get, get, yes. get. Yeah, can we talk about that too? The reassurance that I'm a good parent? <laughs> um, okay, so one of the things I wanted to, to talk to you about is that this, um, I think that the pressure, and I know sp particularly with my generation is the definite helicopter parents, and I say this a lot, 
that I never knew I was a helicopter parent until I look back. And a lot of this was driven by the hyper competitive, you know, you got to go to a good school. And if little mm-hmm. Jimmy is doing, you know, taking ACT classes and doing five sports and volunteering seven days a week, then you need to do that. Otherwise he's going to take your spot like this super. And you don't, I don't, you know, looking back, I didn't even realize that I was that uh, emotionally vested in that whole world until I can see now that when that is the conversation happening around you 24 seven with your peers and their peers, and you get sucked into this scarcity mode, right? And this, there's not enough for my kid. And how is he going to compete if he doesn't have, et cetera, et cetera. And so there is, I think, a lot of that vesting in our kids um, and living vicariously through them, through their achievements, which I think can be, you know, and I know you have definitely have something to say about this, but I, I think part of that where you want what's best for them, but it's also like, it it feels good to say, oh, he has a job at the top, whatever, you know, accounting firm, but is that what's best for him? You know what I mean? So when we become vested or living vicariously through our kids, it, it, it creates even more pressure and stress. I would imagine I'd love to know your thoughts on that as well. Really? Well, I was, I was raised in a very high pressure in a high achieving environment as well. Um, and so I'm familiar with being on both ends of yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. also, you know, raising children in a, in a area where there are a lot of aspirational parents who really want to aspire to like lift their, the next generation of, of their children and launch them into the world well-equipped. So we're, we're right there. I'm right there with you. Um, one of the most important updates we can we can do, you know, give ourselves and to the kids, and it'll be such a gift for them, is updating what our definition of success is. Mm-hmm. Yes, I love that. It's a really important thing because what I hear heard you saying and what I experienced as well is that with with that sense of scarcity is also like a constricting and a narrowing mm-hmm. where it's like if you don't go through this, you know, go down this very narrow path and check all the boxes then uh, it's kind of like, or else. There's like a lot of fear and constriction around that idea of success. Mm-hmm. And so kind of asking yourself, like what, how else can success look? Mm-hmm. Like uh, waking up with an, uh, a, you know, a good attitude in the morning about your day and looking forward to it could be success. Um, right. You know, that like things that are not so quantitative, they're more qualitative. Um, having great friendships and support system in your life actually is proven to help lot, lots of, you know, lots of folks succeed having those really good relationships in your life that no matter what happens, ups or downs with work, like your son just went through, mm-hmm. they're going to be resilient because they know they have community or they know they have, you know, a family member or two who are like really behind them. Right. That's also success, right? In life. Right. Um, right. Yeah, because I think when we start to push the metrics on the kids, they feel judged. Mm -hmm. And they feel like they're either measuring up or they're failing. And Mm -hmm. that puts the relationship on rocky ground too. Because they're about proving that they're worthy of our love and attention and our approval, rather than getting to discover like what their version of success is and be celebrated for their discoveries. Right. And I can say definitely as an adult now, I see that there are other ways that success shows itself, right? right. I wish I had more of that picture in my head when I was, my kids were younger. Mm -hmm. So for those of you with young kids, you know, check that. And I don't know, I'm sure it still exists out there. Um, And this is not a make wrong either. You know, I I know that there are things I could have done better as a parent, but like I said, I don't have regrets because I feel I did the best job I could out of complete love. And so I love these tips because I think it helps um, really kind of refocus and, and, and pull back um, Mm -hmm. and get a bigger picture view of what success might look like for our kids. And I think one of the things that I hear is, you know, back to the boundaries again is as my kids are going to college, they're becoming adults, you know, they've graduated. How do I give them, let them know, and you've kind of touched on this already, that they're supported and I'm there for them, but they also are now have this accountability, right? That, that you know, you are stepping into an adult role. You have responsibilities and accountability. 
um, how how do we how do we mentally <laughs> or even you know find a way to make that shift so that we don't feel that attachment to how they're doing right and that we can let them go spread their wings and learn from life and experience that do you have any tips around that well this part gets tricky because um our adult children still need us to show that we're paying attention that we care and that if we are concerned to be able to share those concerns they still need that from us it just takes a different shape mm -hmm. and i think um coming to it get with, with with the main purpose at first your first purpose is to gather information show understanding and really really celebrate whatever successes they're having even if it's not the poster 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 perfect version of it is a great like foundation to then get into conversations where you do get to maybe voice some of your concerns or give advice or Can you repeat those kinds of things yeah so it's um you know like observing and, and gathering information like really being more like getting into their world first right before we make assumptions that was the first thing we talked about right. one other one is like really showing your understanding and some empathy for what they might be going through um and without without because sometimes when we empathize like uh, katie's asking this question like how do you share empathy with her 18 year old who is now pregnant five months pregnant and congratulations you have a grand grandbaby on the way katie um and wondering like you know, cause she lived as a teenage mom as well. So how can she share empathy? Katie, I feel like it's, it's if it's, it's just center her story, you know, like share, share that you understand because you've been there, but keep centering her story in other words. Um, and, and for you, you know, it's gonna be different than, than it was for me for a lot of reasons. Um, and, and asking her again, getting into her world, like, you know, what kinds of friends do you have around that we could start talk, you could start talking to to build, build some community around this baby coming. Um, you know, just starting to ask those kinds of questions that are like to differentiate yourself <laughs> from your story from her so that you're not like putting your story on her, but you're letting her know that you've had similar struggles, but then focus back on her. Like she, <laughs> she needs you to not put your story on her, but also know that you, you've got some experience too. Yeah. Katie, I to respond to that. Um, so there was the, again, updating, update, you know, getting, getting information, getting into their world, really listening, um, putting your assumptions aside. So you get the updates, um, sharing your understanding and uh, empathizing. And I just gave that example for Katie, where you do it a bit, but then you kind of come back into what their story is, what they're up to, how it's going to be different as well from your own experience. And then the third piece I think that is so important is um, when it's time for us to share our concerns or when it's time for us to share our advice, when it's time for us, like, cause there will be like, we are gonna continue to have moments with adult kids. It's so powerful to get their permission. Mm. Hey, state your intention. Hey, um, there's a few things that have been happening lately that have me a little concerned. Um, I really want to share those concerns with you, but I want to make sure that it's at the right time, you know, and that it's okay with you. Now just hear those words for a second. For me, when I hear that, like something like it like heals me a little bit from like the way I was parented, where it's yeah. just like the criticisms, the judgments, the, the, the scrutiny, the advice just kind of drops in whenever it feels like it, you know, whatever she just wants to share it. I think my mom in particular. And how that would put up walls for me. Cause I'm like, when's I gonna, when's the next comment coming? How powerful if she just say, hey, sweetheart, can I share some of my thoughts about this? Right. Oh my gosh, that like permission or like, it's really like consent to having that conversation where, you know, like your parent who's so, such a big figurehead in your life is about to maybe share some things that are not that flattering and share some fears and worries. Um, and maybe even give advice. What a great thing to, you know, have have the listener be on board and give consent to that conversation. It's so and if awesome. they say no, we respect that. I can Instead say, of saying it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, right. So then you don't you don't bulldoze them. Right. Really, really what because fear will bulldoze. Fear will go, but I really need to share this with you, honey. And you know, then you basically blew it. Like you you asked for permission and then you just ignored their <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So, so if it's something that you know you have to share, 
It's not something you can withhold from them. It's something really, really important. Mm -hmm. um, you can say, sweetheart, there's something that I need to share with you, but I want to make sure I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, we're having this conversation at a time that works for you. When would be a good time for us to <laughs> catch up and I had, can share a few things, a few thoughts with you. And sometimes it's just, it, you actually insist, you actually insist, but hopefully you've done some information gathering, you've shown some empathy, you've given some space and some room so that when you ask that question, it just lands better. Because mm -hmm. what our adult children never want us to do <laughs> is give us advice from a place of not actually getting it. You know that whole, you don't get it. Yeah. Starts at like to age 12, even yeah. younger, sometimes eight, I've seen yeah. it. And I help parents with that. <laughs> Yeah. Like, ugh, you don't get it. And they just, they shut you out. So we help them with making sure that they see that we get it and that we really are in it with them and for them. And this isn't about us right. this isn't about controlling us, soothing our anxiety or, or, or you know, or our worry. This is actually for them. And we have enough right. of an update that whatever we're going to say next is actually going to make some sense. It's not just sort of out of the blue advice. That's right. Like, the eye rolls and the like this, right? Right. So, yeah. That's yeah. brilliant. Brilliant advice. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that we've talked about is, you know, how, how to not live vicariously through our kids or have them, their success reflect on us, et cetera. And one of the things that, you know, I work with moms in this group and my clients is, you know, it, it becomes really difficult to shift your focus from them when you are focused on yourself, right? When you start looking at yourself, particularly as your kids are older, maybe they're out of the house, maybe they're living at home, but they are going to school, whatever the case may be, where you start to build a fulfilling life for yourself and you find your own passions and you find your own purpose outside beyond being a mom, right? <laughs> and I think that um, I know the times when I feel <laughs> most supportive and most, and, and probably um, the most, uh, I want to say resilient to calling my son and checking on him obsessively is when I've got my stuff going on. I've got my life. I'm doing my thing with my business. I've got my clients. I've got something that's filling me up so that I'm not looking to him to validate me. Like it's that whole motherhood role of, you know, my kids, no longer, you know, when we look outside of ourselves for validation or meaning or fulfillment, it doesn't end well because there becomes this, you know, attachment. I wondered if you could speak to that a little bit in terms of how to, you know, find that balance. And is that something that you've seen in your own experience? Well, yeah, I mean, Bridget, I feel like you just, you just, uh, there's not much to add. I mean, you're so right about that. I mean, one of the things I always help parents do is, you know, find an identity outside of parenting because, um, and it, it's not too late. If it, if, if it was the role you took on the most for 10, 20 years, you know, um, or, or plus, um, it can take some time and working with someone like you is just such a good idea or like, and by the way, anyone who's found the Thriving Moms Collective is in such good hands, obviously, um, you. because you really help, for, it takes time to like, repattern that because you're gonna you're gonna default you're gonna default back into focusing on the kids and putting yourself second it's just what we've done for so long right or what your your sort of vigilance around i got to keep the kids healthy and safe you know <laughs> here right. um, kind of pushes you to do i mean neurologically biologically even you know involuntarily <laughs> it's just like back to the kids back to the kids right yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so it can take practice and it can take time and it can take concerted effort and even like what you do, like coaching and programs and community, or like the folks here who are in this group, like you coming back for more because they understand that to, the process. To, to, yeah, the pro like to be able to actually make that transition, um, it's a lot less painful with support and a lot uh, with inspiration pulling you forward. So. Yeah, um, I don't know that I have much to add except yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so absolutely. important. <laughs> and I, I would also say around all of this is treat yourself with compassion and grace and give yourself the space and the room to know that, um, like I said, you know, you do the best you can with what you've got. And, um, you know, 
regrets in and of themselves are kind of futile because you're not living in the past anymore. You're in the present and how can you best move forward? And um, these tips have been phenomenal and I would love it. Um, I don't know. I can send you the recording if you wouldn't mind just either doing like just like a one page with the three things, you know, the, the, those key pieces that you did are just, we can have a conversation so that I can share that with the group because I believe that the moms that are here, you, you've shared such wisdom with us today and it would be wonderful to have, have a cheat sheet, you know, as I'm writing things down, going, okay. So before I get on the phone with my son to go, okay, you know, check in, how's it going? Show compassion, you know, just so I can reprogram um and give myself that i'm a really big fan of um having scripts because language is such a powerful way to sort of neurolinguistically like change the way we perceive reality honestly right so it's like oh right so this thing this feeling's coming up where i have this urge to ask a bunch of questions um that are really about my assuaging my fears soothing myself yes um, what are some oh, i need to go in with some questions ready that really shift the focus back on how can i support you i'm here for you um, showing empathy, you know, right? Like yes. getting more yes. information before jumping to conclusions about what's needed. And then like, I like to write on the word, like pause, pause and listen. Oh yeah. Like, talk less. Like I just was driving with my stepson um, to visit some family. And I got to this point where he, he asked some questions and I started talking and I realized I'm like, I've been talking for like five straight, 10, five, 10 straight minutes. And I was just like, pause. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not hard. about like, you know, and then I, I waited and then he was like, oh, and then he shared some great story. And I was just like, that's it. Like there, right. I did it. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. Yay. Those yeah. Would be, that would be really helpful. So maybe we can coordinate and we'll drop them in the group. So everybody that has this, um, is there anything else you'd like to share? I know with, um, do you have an upcoming group or, um, I would love for you to be able to, um, talk to the, talk to the women here, about you know getting more of you and how they can do that so please share whatever information you have and we'll drop it into the chat for sure well sure yeah um well it's kind of an exciting time because our of the year because we're opening up doors for a year-long program called the family foundations immersion mm -hmm. and that's where we go through these seven pillars to raising resilient kids things like how to set boundaries and, and limits and ways that stick that are really supportive um running smooth routines, how to deal with what do you do when big emotions come up? Like, how do you stay calm? How do you help your kids through that? Ways to motivate kids without as many rewards and punishments. And it's all, it's all things that, um, you know, parents of kids from ages two to 12 can really benefit from because you're like in the moment, you can really use them. So I would just urge folks, if you know anybody in your world who is complaining about things like, I can't get my kids to listen, my child's having all these tantrums, I'm not sure what to do. Those are the kinds of problems I love to solve and help parents feel really empowered about. So they're calm and confident, know what to do, know what to say. Um, so if anybody comes to mind, send them my way by either having them join my free um, you know, Facebook group I'll set up similarly to Bridget's, like the Thriving Moms Collective. Um, that would probably be the best way for us to get to know each other. Um, and then they can also take this quiz that I have designed to kind of help parents get clear about you know, what their gaps are from those pillars. Um, and then an opportunity to, to chat more with me. Yeah, so I can I can share those links into the comments so folks can find you. That would be great. That would be great. Yeah. Thank you so much. And where were you when I was raising my kids? That's all I can say. <laughs> um, it, it sounds, I think your clients are so lucky to have you and you're you have such a beautiful, calm, demeanor backed by all this expertise that you have. Um, and, you know, please check out the Facebook group. We'll, we'll put the link in. Did you have something else that you wanted to, to uh, add? I was just gonna. Yeah, just to the conversation. And I love what you said about being compassionate to yourself. And, you know, I would just encourage people to keep swimming with other fish who wanna get to the same place. You know, be, being here, working with Bridget, finding your people who are on a similar spot in our journeys. Um, you know, in my world, it makes such a, as you see, it makes such a difference with the parents I end up working with. And what I can say is like, sure, you can do this on your own. Of course you can, but do you have to? Right. Do you really have to, or could you, you know, like there's so many other 
sort of life transitions that we get support with, like nobody throws the, an entire wedding for themselves, like a huge event. We ask for support, we ask for help, like other rites of passage. Like we go to our medical practitioners when it's time to do all our prenatal care. Like we, we have team, we have support around us mm -hmm. during our life transitions. And like children, grow, children becoming grown and or leaving the nest or having left the nest, that's a huge rite of passage. Um, so is raising, you know, strong-willed, big emotion kids, which are the parents who find me. They're like, I don't want to do what my parents did about big emotions. But yeah. I said, Help me. I'm like, yeah, you don't have to do this on your own. So like, you can do it on your own, but you don't, do you have to? Like, yeah. yeah, no, and that's a beautiful point too, is that, um, and that's what, why I asked the moms that are here to be vulnerable and share because you never know who could be sitting there too afraid to speak up because there tends to be a stigma around, you know, admitting that you might be struggling with your kids. I mean, I don't know how many families that I saw when my kids were growing up that were perfect. I know they weren't perfect, but we never talked about or shared, you know, the war stories or, oh my gosh, this is so frustrating. And I think there's so much, um, just having that support there's so much to be said for that. And so, you know, continue to, to share vulnerably in the, in the group and, you know, look for support and look for, I actually heard Brene Brown to that point, um, speak about this transition of becoming an empty nester and that it's probably one of the most life-changing, you know, transitions that doesn't really, it's not acknowledged really, you know, it's kind of like moms are just kind of moving on to the next phase. Oh, that's mom. She's fine. But there's a lot that comes with that between, you know, the adult children and the boundaries and rediscovering yourself. And oh, by the way, taking care of any aging parents or in-laws or there's so much happening. But so I just wanted to reiterate that point is look for support, reach out to myself, reach out to Vanessa. Um, and thank you so much for being here. I would love to have you back. And um, I'm sure I'm sure people will get, the moms here will get so much value from your wisdom. So thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Thanks for having me. And yeah, um, keep encouraging each other, keep lifting each other up, a bright, you know, being bright. I love that acronym that you, that you have that. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. Yeah, and I see that for all of you. You know, it's what we deserve. We're, we're big hearted parents. That's why we end up, you know, even coming to, to talks like this. So if you're exactly. here, just know we see you and we love you and we see that love in your heart. Oh, I love that. Thank you. And thank you for bearing with us with our, <laughs> our strange <laughs> voice that came in there. Um, but thank you. Look forward to seeing you in the group and don't hesitate to reach out for more support. Yeah. Take Bye. care, everybody. Bye.